G'day everyone and on today's episode of Nolsey's Outdoors we're going to be removing the LPG tank from my 90 series Toyota Prado. Alright so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal from the battery using a 10mm tube socket so it's not too hard obviously you're just disconnecting the battery so you want to make sure that you isolate any sort of electricity anything like that because you don't want to absolutely cook your ECU nor do you want to like you know fry yourself doing something that you shouldn't really be. Um, yeah, that simple, just make sure for safety reasons you're just connecting your negative terminal. And the other part of actually doing this removal is actually removing the condenser here. So I imagine um, this is only mounted in with a couple of bolts itself, but unplugging all of this may cause major starting issues. Like there's a diagnosis port here that's got some cables that's been butchered into it. This is all stuff that was done in the 90s and just no one cared about it, you know, so maybe the early 2000s, I don't know, either way. Long story short is, is it's just old garbage and it would have been popular at the time because it would have been cheap then, but LPG is hard to get now and it's $1.30 a litre or something, so it's just not worth it anymore. Um, so yeah, that's the big reason that we're getting rid of it. Also, it's not reliable, so. All right, so what I've just done now is I've just undone the, what appears to be like the actual intake feed from the condenser to the intake and I've taken it off of that there uh, now I'm just going to, I've taken it off of that one over there as well where it bungs into the actual, to the actual throttle body. Now I'm just going to take this complete tubing away just to get it out of the way and then I'll get a better attack at this here. I've also unplugged a couple of the bits of plugs and things that are floating around for this one here as well. Um, there was one on that little solenoid there and then one on some other bits and pieces here. What I'm concerned with is if I unplug all this cabling and then the switch in the dash doesn't switch, like doesn't like isn't on for the sub tank. So after I remove all of these, I'm gonna to have to start the car and find out whether or not it still runs. So after having really gotten, of that, gotten rid of that hose, I've now got a problem where I've got, that is just an open intake to the throttle body. So I'll need to bung that up somehow with something. But I've got rid of that cable, so that's good. What, I've also unplugged all those, as I mentioned a moment ago, but next thing I'm undoing now is I'm just using a 17 mil spanner to undo that just there. Uh, that way I can take away the gas line to what appears to be the activate the actual tap of the gas system and Theoretically, I haven't heard hissing yet. So I think the tank is probably empty either that or it's actually switched off already at the back of the car So best of luck. I'm gonna get that undone and then we're gonna move on to taking this actual condenser out All right everyone. So for those out there, this is a big Nolsey's tip and um, what I've done is, is I've accidentally dropped a nut, just where is it? I don't know if you can see it on camera here, but I've actually dropped a nut basically right down square past all of that stuff down in there, right? Now I'm thinking, oh no, what am I gonna do? I've dropped a nut down in there, how can I get it out? Get yourself one of these. It is a 61 centimeter spring core pickup tool, basically. What it has is it's just a plunger handle bit and a claw at the other end. And then you literally just squeeze that, it opens up and you can grab whatever all the way over there. Let's see if I can get this out. Let's see if I can get this out. Live action. Ooh, missed it that time. Alright, cool, got this here. I think I got it. Did I get it? Oh, I think I did. Yeah, look at that. Cop that, that can go over there with all that other crap. Just release it, the ham done. This is the best $7.50 you'll spend in your entire life. Remember, 61 centimeter spring claw pickup tool. Just quickly while I do have your team, I have obviously this bit of a, you know, vacuum leak here where the old gas system used to feed into the air intake. What I've gone and done is I've just went out and bought this bung for four dollars in the uh, in the in like the radiator aisle in Super Cheap Auto where all the radiator hoses and stuff are. So what I'm just gonna do with that is I'm just gonna go well bam and it's way too massive. Um, get a smaller one, don't get one this big. Well bam, whack that on and then whack a hose clamp on and then we'll tighten that up and then we'll fix it up. Problem is, is mine's too big, um, but that's exactly what you can do to fix yours up so that you don't have to worry about bunging it up or anything, okay? All right, so I'm literally underneath the car and I've so far deducted, it looks as though there's these style of little clamps here 
all the way along what appears to be the gas feed with the power for the gas feed. Now if I'm right, this should go all the way back to the back of the car. And then basically what will happen is, is it will get back to the back of the gas tank over there. And I'll have to uh, detach it in some regard from the gas tank. Uh, so that it's not just dragging along underneath the back end of the car. But yeah, there's one there obviously. There's another one just up over... Just up over there is another one, I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't know if you can see it or not. And then there's definitely at least one more, just... Where is it? Oh, can I get an angle on it? Not really. Not a good angle to look at. There's, there's a couple more. There's a few more of these clamps just floating around, so... Might take me a hot minute to actually... Oh, there's one. Might take me a hot minute to actually navigate this out, but we'll pull them all out and see if we can get this, this tubing out. Alright, so I've just run and disconnected all the stuff from underneath the car all the way up to the point where we're at the back of the vehicle now um, but just climb a bit down here I don't know where this is gonna go to but I think if I'm not wrong I think that might be a bit more of it uh, this will need to come out I think too but uh, this here is the in the the engine like towards the engine part this is all bit disconnected I've got to get this cover off to see if I can get access to this tank and then yeah we'll do the best to get it off Okay, so I just got the cover vault uh, from there out, uh, from that little hole just there out. That was a bastard, I had to get a spanner onto it and it took me 20 minutes. The one on the other side, the opposite side, over there, obviously it wasn't as slow because it was like, you know, take two seconds because it's just open. Now I just need to get rid of that one there and that one just there, I'm pretty sure. So I should be able to take the, that should be the end of the cabling or the end of the covering for that. And maybe if I'm very lucky, I won't have to take this tow bar off, but it's looking a lot like I'm gonna have to, so wish me luck. Yeah, so my, unfortunately my suspicions were correct. These tabs here that held this shield on, um, they're too long for me to be able to just drop the cover off without taking the tow bar off. So I guess I'm gonna have to bust my ass getting this tow bar off because they look pretty rusted on there, I think. The other issue I have is, is um, these, especially these two nut bolts right here, I don't have anything with good access to them because this exhaust's in the way and I really don't want to have to take the exhaust the, the exhaust tip off because that's going to be a mole. Um, Alright, cool. Leave it with me and I'll uh, see what I can do. Alright, so last you would have saw me, I would have just undone all of the uh, bolts for the LPG tank cover. But as you can see, a lot more has happened since then. I actually took the whole rear bumper off because in my setup, I don't know who did this when they actually fitted all this up, but what they've done is, there's a bolt here and a nut. The issue is, is to loosen this bolt here, this nut spins, but I've got literally nothing to hold this nut down while I while I undo it. Um, so this has been a bit, of a bit of a hassle, I won't lie. It's been a few hours now. But yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm working through it. I'm pretty confident I'll have this all part. I just got to figure out exactly how. Okay, so today's a new day. Um, I'm come back at it again with some more progress. Uh, I've got the old factory petrol tank cover off. Now, my debate is: is do I entirely remove this uh, tow bar, or do I bolt it back up now while it's here? I think I might just bolt it back up. But I'm gonna have a quick, oh, probably a bit of a sketchy look under here to see what kind of access I can get to it now while it's here and by the looks of it I can get pretty okay access but it'd be much better with it removed so I think I'm just gonna find something to help me lift it up again I'm currently using a water bottle for support but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna see if I can't take the bar off and then I'll have access to all the fittings and such from here that way I can actually remove all of this properly. This tube here needs to come out off, but I don't know if it's gonna be safe to do as such. Hopefully it's got a tap and the tap is off. Um, I'm gonna look as hard as I can to see if there's anything here to get out of there, because I have no idea if this is actually got anything in it, you know, so. But yeah, all right, wish me luck. So after taking the bull bar, after taking the tow bar off, sorry, I uh, took the tow bar off and now look at this. Um, I found that there was just literally a loose plug that plugs into all this mess here. Um, so I unrouted some of this cable to get it out of the way as well. I found that the filler tube piece literally just mounts up into a 
little gas tap thing just there that I'm gonna have to undo somehow. That might not be too difficult, but we'll see. Um, there's a ground cable for the whole system just there I need to undo. And then by the look of it, up there there's a bolt that appears to hold the strap in. And I'm hoping that that's all that's there. Cause that's all it looks like it's there. Cause it could be a long boy attempt at taking that off. That'll be a long, be a deep, deep socket job, I think. Don't even know if I have a socket capable of doing it, but we'll get ring spanners onto it if we can't. So yeah, let's let's see if we can take that off. Another one on the other side. I think there's two at the very front, but I haven't seen them yet. And if I have to, I'll take out both, but this is going to be heavy. So I'm going to try and find something I can park under it to help support the weight. All right, so I'm just right up under the car again, and I don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up because I'm in a funny angle, but might be upside down to me, but upside down to you or whatever. But there's one bolt just there. And one bolt just there, oh, sorry, nuts just there that I need to undo. I've just parked a bit of water under this so it doesn't just go fall and go bang and crash and roll and hit me in the face. Because that'll kill me. Um, and that would be not good. All right, well everyone, what I did was I ended up getting a trolley jack and a bottle jack all in one go. Uh, ended up having the bottle underneath it just so that it didn't fall off in case of emergencies there, but looks like it it looks like i got the tank out so the tank is now out it's disconnected from the whole car now the problem i have now is is it's uh i think it might be full um i slosh it and it makes like the normal gas bottle noise when you slosh it around so i'm pretty sure there's at least something in this but it's a bit heavy for me to remove on my own so i might see what i can do about it i might just have to struggle it or might find something to roll it onto instead um but yeah no we'll uh go from here and see what we can do with it but yeah i've still got a few bits and pieces to remove like the old strap and maybe there's a cage that's four up there as well too but um yeah so far the lpg tank is out once i've moved that aside i'm going to work on actually removing the last of this tubing and then i'm going to try and tackle this problem here the other component of the problem is is this has been siliconed in in here that's been bolted in i have absolutely no clue how on earth i'm going to get rid of this uh, feels like it's pretty solid in there. I'm hoping it's not like welded in or anything like that at that point. Um, yeah, I pushed in that little valve there and it made a little tsst noise, so that's not giving me good confidence. But I think that's meant to do that. I might have just had a bit of pressure in the line. Because if it was just open, open, I reckon if I push that in, it'd go whiss and empty the whole tank. But it only let a little bit out, so who knows? I'm gonna find out. All right, everyone, so here I am again, little car, and look, I've gotten even the top framing out of the actual thing too, so. But from what I can see, for the remainder of the stuff I need before I put the long-range tank in, I've got that bit of bung there, which I assume is the fill tube for it. I've got uh, that as a, probably a return. Then there'll be tubing that'll go somewhere Maybe that is for the actual feed for it, from the tank to the thing, but who knows, I've got that there. As for power plugs and such for the actual fuel tank, I can't seem to see much of anything, which is a bit concerning. So unless, unless this here is the pump, the fuel pump plug, unless that there's a fuel pump plug, which it very well could be. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult for me to figure out exactly uh, where, where to go from here. In any case, I'm glad that the LPG tank is out because that opens up all of this room for this stuff here. Um, I'm gonna put the car back together now and then we'll go for a, uh, we'll go try and start the car and get it all happening. I almost completely forgot to tell everybody this, but by the looks of it, I actually managed to uh, remove the gas tap from here and the piping that went down to that as well. At the very very bottom down here there was a little bracket that was bolted to like hold some gas piping in. I'm sorry I can't get a good angle at it from here but yeah we'll go for that. Uh, the There was basically just this nut on this bit of brass tubing here and just needed to be undone so I did that, undid that. Then uh, what happened was that I took the actual gas tap itself out um, that is now currently sitting over here with all of the other garbage. So there's the gas tap there. Uh, no, the gas refill bit, I should say. So, uh, yeah, there's that there. And knowing everybody that's smart, they won't bother buying and getting a hold of that, that's all good. But yeah, so I've done that. Then, 
literally after I'd undone that bracket and all that sort of stuff, this hole just here had some silicon around it and all that sort of stuff there. Um, I literally just twisted until it broke the seal silicon here. Now I might get a replacement one of these rubbers in here one day, but I don't really care too much about that. I'll whack some tape on it or something, I don't care. Um, and yeah, this, now I just pulled it all out and then boom, that was that tube I just threw down over there, which was this one here. Now do bear in mind, I snapped this because that was the only way that I could get I think it's this tube, this tube here off. So there's the other end of that. So that might have been an absolute drama if I didn't snap it off. So yeah, if you're removing this sort of stuff, just snap it. Like if you need it again, like, I mean, you're removing the LPG system anyway, you're never gonna need it. So just break it, like save yourself the time and the hassle. But in any case, I've finally got my fuel cap now back to normal. So next time when we go to install our long range tank, I'll have to get rid of that for the tank access. And then obviously at the bottom there's some bungs I'll need to get rid of. But yeah, no, that's that's way better. This is a quality of life thing that'll be, like it's no longer have to fiddle around to get the cap off anymore. So that's really, really good. In any case, I got that part off as well too. So now that's all done. It's it's the only thing left now is just the electronics. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go see if I can get this switch out from the dash and then we'll go from there. All right, so. I've managed to put the car back together. I've got it all plugged up back to the, how it was with the trailer plug where it was. I haven't got my tow hitch back in there, but that'll take me two seconds. Um, I've got to pack my tools up because I don't think I'll need them for the next part of the job. The next part of the job is going to be a bit different. It'll be, uh, well, I'll fire the car up and see if it actually, you know, functions. That'll be good. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, see if I can remove any of the old switches for the gas and then get rid of that. And then theoretically the whole thing should be no gas system in it anymore at all. I'm super excited to get rid of that. I was never keen on gas. Uh, that's the tank that came out. Obviously I've moved it and cleaned up a couple of the cables and the amount of garbage I've gotten rid of now over here, obviously a bunch of cables, some screws and some nuts and bolts and shit that I'm never gonna need again. Uh, the condenser, all of that, that's all been removed. Um, yeah, now it's just onto tidying up the little bit of wiring in the engine bay that I'm never ever gonna need ever again. Like this brown cable like right, he right here, like what is this? You know, so that'll never need again. Awesome, all right, hopefully it fires up. Um, but yeah, first I'm gonna remove some of this cabling that I don't think we're gonna need, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so the last thing I've done for this install after a bit was uh, get out my multimeter, do a bit of stuff. I've had a little bit of fiddling around to figure out, uh, once I had unplugged everything, the car wouldn't like fire up. It'd crank over, but wouldn't fire. Turns out this cable that came out of the uh, engine loom here must be linked to the uh, either the fuel pump solenoid or the ignition coil, one of the two, like whether or not it's uh, a firing issue, like a spark issue or a fuel issue, the car wasn't getting one of the two of those, that's why I wasn't firing over. So yeah, that has now been bridged just temporarily with some like twist job, but now the car starts and runs perfect. So now I've just got cleanup to do, I'll probably find some zip ties and do some bits and pieces with this bit of cable here. Um, once I've done that, that'll mean that the car will be perfectly up to scratch, ready to go, and there'll be literally zero parts of the LPG system still left in the car uh, since when I began. But yeah, no, that's, uh, that's good. I'm just going to go through clean up and tidy up, and then uh, we'll end the video from there. Alright, so that's sort of what's involved with removing the LPG system in a 90 series Tato. Um, Obviously, uh, yeah, we've got the tank out, we've got the condenser out, we've removed all the wiring, we uh, sorted out our little uh, wiring hiccup, that was a bit of a bit of a task out there. Um, it actually took me a little while to be able to sort that out, but that was a thing. Um, now I'm going to have to just dispose of all the old components that I no longer need anymore. Um, the next big challenge is going to be uh, finding a replacement for it. Uh, now, I'm going to leave any guess in the comments what I'm going to be doing with that instead. Um, but yeah, while I'm here, I just wanted to say... Uh, We've reached 250 subscribers on the channel now, so I'm super stoked with that. That's excellent. Um, I can't thank everyone enough for subscribing and choosing to follow along. Like, I never thought that I'd ever have two people be interested in what I have to say rather than 250. So, yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I appreciate that. But, yeah, no, um, stay tuned. Uh, we've got some big stuff coming for this in the works. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of work here and there done to make sure it's prepped and ready. Like, we've got snorkels to do, we've got rear bars to consider, we've got, you know, maybe even lockers to think about. Um, but the big one, I think it's going to be the harder part to do for us, is long-range fuel tank. Um, now, I've got a long-range fuel tank already, but uh, we're uh, we're working on getting the parts together for that and lots of stuff. So, um, yeah, so just wanted to say thanks again for watching, and catch us next time. 
Thanks again for tuning into another episode of Nolsey's Outdoors. One quick note before I go though, um, what I want to mention is, is if you don't know exactly what you're doing with the removal of an LPG tank, I suggest don't leave it to a professional. Now, I was willing to take the risk because I figured I'd made all the safety precautions that I needed to, i.e. switching off the gas tanks, uh, getting the correct lifting equipment, all that sort of stuff. But even then, I felt pretty sketchy, mostly with my lifting equipment. But yeah, no, it's a, um, it's a task that should be best left to professionals. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.